Hi there and welcome to our church service. If you are new and joining us online for the first time, then a special welcome to you. You've joined us on a very exciting day for our church. It is our Mission Sunday. This is when we get to see what we have been able to achieve together in, this, in reaching out into our world over this last year and also to hear about exciting things ahead that God has for us to do. So say hi in the chat. In fact, if you are joining us on YouTube today, why don't you jump over to the online community at 10 a.m. and join in with our chat team. When we come together as the body of Christ, we come together first and foremost to honour God, don't we, and put him first. So will you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we come into your presence right now and we say and we declare that we put you first. We honour you for who you are. We put you in your rightful place in our lives and in our hearts. Amen. Well, we're about to go into a time of worship followed by the message. So let's open our hearts to the words and worship God together. Let's have a real sense of anticipation of meeting with him and hearing from him during the service. Hello. Are you ready to worship this morning? Yeah, I am. Uh, I, I just thought I'd take a moment to start with uh, reading a, a lyric from this song we're about to sing. I love lyrics. I love the truth of scripture presented in song. And that's what we do this morning when we worship. We're presenting, we're actually speaking into and, and we're, um, we're, we're grabbing scripture and we're singing it over ourselves. And there's a great declaration that we sing. I just wanted to read it because sometimes these words I know they come up on the screen and not enough time for us to process. So... Uh, the chorus goes like this. We are your people. You are our God. We are your temple. Make us holy like you are. We are your children. You set us apart. God, for your glory, make us holy like you are. So that's the chorus. So when you get to that, like you, my heart wants to just explode. But then there's this, this bridge, the center of this. Mark your people with your presence. Make us a place where you delight to dwell. May we heed your hand's correction. O oh Lord, our shepherd, you do all things well. Your love is firm as it is tender. Your law is perfect and your judgment's true. As we run to re-surrender, you will restore what we return to you. And I think there's so much in the art of when we lift our hands and we sing and we do these physical things that look like Pentecostal church maybe, but they're actually just an action and an expression of worship and opening up our heart to God of re-surrendering. And that's the heart of this song, of re-surrender, this act of constant, I'm laying down my will for your kingdom, God. So can I ask you to stand? And I'm going to ask you this morning to re-surrender. Just open your hands, open your heart. Make us holy like you are. 
love our creative team. Thank you. Okay, grab a seat. Who likes, who likes, who is a fan of Valentine's Day? <laughs> yeah, I'm not either. I knew there was a reason why I came to this church. <laughs> I don't know why, I just... All right, well, great to have you all at church. Welcome to all our onliners. Great having you with us today. Shout out to Jill Amory, who always joins us 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning. We miss you, Jill, and we're praying for you. Well, today is Mission Sunday, and I'm going to share some thoughts around missions and the culture we live in. Dan, Mindy, and myself are going to do a tag team this morning, give you an overview of our three components that make up our corporate missions, that make up what we do together And um, you're going to see some clips and hear some personal stories. But first of all, I want to thank you for last year. You were extraordinary last year. You did the opposite of what uh, was in the natural, but that's what God does. He's the God of the opposites and the paradoxes. It was one of the toughest years we'd all experienced emotionally and financially, and yet you opened your hearts, dug deep, and you gave more financially than in any other year that we have been here for 30 years. You gave gave 220,000. I know, you are amazing. We built, we, all of us, built more buildings, took in more orphans, rescued more kids, launched more programs, fed more local families, planted more churches, and gave more community resource than any other year before. Proverbs 19, 17 says this, anyone who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord. God will reward them for what they have done. And I am praying that God restores everything to you. Anything you've lost, I am praying that as we give, God is the great restorer and he will restore to you. That's what that scripture says. All right. 41 years ago, Mark and myself were at a youth camp. That Saturday morning. Oh, there we are. I, could find, I couldn't find any photos because it was years before the iPhone. Um, that Saturday morning, I heard the gospel And I was pondering. The speaker showed me from scripture that I needed Christ's righteousness to get me into heaven. I'd never heard that before. I thought I could make it on my own merits. That afternoon, Saturday afternoon, as Mark and I walked up a dirt track, Mark asked me this question. Ros, do you think you will go to heaven? Good question. Up until then, we both believed that God had a measuring system and depending on how good you were, determined your entry into heaven. Mark was expecting me, because he knew me, to say, probably not. But I looked at him, and this word came out of my mouth. I said, yes. There was no altar call. There was no say this prayer after me. There was no band. But the moment I said yes, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I received the free gift of righteousness, and I knew I was going to heaven. That day, the gospel transformed my life. That day, the gospel gave me a meaning in life. That suffering can't take away. A satisfaction that isn't based on circumstances. An identity that isn't fragile. A way to deal with guilt and forgive others. A basis to seek justice and a confidence to face the future and even death itself. And that is what Mission Sunday is all about. A lot has changed there since then. But humanity's need for the gospel will never change. Today's church in Western society has to deal with something that we've never faced before, a culture that is increasingly hostile to our faith. And there has been a lot of different responses. Some churches have become political, becoming a voice for a leftward or rightward political party. Some Christians have become defensive and aggressive against culture and sought to dominate. Some Christians have withdrawn from culture completely, entirely, Some have compromised with culture and been assimilated by it. James Hunter, professor at University of Virginia, says this. He gives an alternative. Christians do not withdraw from culture, but they do not compromise and they do not try and dominate. They simply enter every field trying to be salt and light, trying to serve, and yet at the same time being true to their Christian faith. They are faithful, which means they stay true to the Bible, but they're present. Now, this is hard to balance. 
It's hard to be truth and grace, salt and light. But I like what Tim Keller says. We can do it if we keep the gospel at the centre. He says this, when we lose the grasp on the truth that we are saved by faith alone, through grace alone, because of Christ alone, we not only lose our joy and fall into fear, but we also lose our graciousness and we fall into pride. If the church continually moves towards dominance and control rather than love and service, it shows that it doesn't really believe the gospel it preaches. And if the church doesn't believe the gospel, why should the world? That is a powerful quote. In our polarised culture, there are competing voices for justice. However, as followers of Christ, I believe we need to know and align with biblical justice. And biblical justice has three themes that flow through the Bible. First, from Psalm 146, the godly choose to live in such a way that they disadvantage themselves to advantage the community. Second, everyone must be treated equally and with dignity. And lastly, advocacy, speaking up for those who cannot speak for themselves. That is what biblical justice is. Last week, we talked about our vision towards Christ, which is where we are going. Our mission is how we get there. We have an individual mission, how, as a church, we encourage you to go towards Christ by looking up to God, leaning into church and reaching out. Dan is the oversight for our reach out component and Mindy is, facilitates and leads up our Macquarie Care vision, so that's why they are speaking today. We also have a corporate mission, which is bringing others towards Christ. So we have an individual mission that we encourage you to go towards Christ, your own personal journey. But we also have a corporate mission of all of us together, what we do together. And this is divided into three areas, kingdom, investing in people and projects that share the message of Christ. That's what I'm going to share on today. Nations, supporting projects that provide hope to children, widows and those in poverty. That's what Dan's going to share. And lastly, Mindy, on community, showing kindness and caring for the needs of our community. I would challenge you that if you haven't got a sense of wanting to bring justice and... um, Help the poor and needy disadvantaged. I would challenge the Christ in you. And I would challenge you to go back and read through the Gospels and see the work that he did. That challenges for me too. You've got to know everything I say up here. I'm challenging me too. (laughs) All right. Before I share briefly what we're going to do in in Kingdom Arena, I believe that part of the new wineskin is supporting the the next generation of leaders who are in our church and who are sacrificing their own lifestyle so that they can be changed by the gospel. And in our culture, in the younger generation, that is rare and getting rarer. So I want to cheer them on and encourage them. With this in mind, this year we are going to be supporting the Red Frogs ministry team. We're going to be supporting the Dissers who, whether they base themselves here or in Sri Lanka, will continue to minister into the nation of Sri Lanka. And Dan and Lizzie have come back from Singapore with a passion in their heart and are launching Schools of Light. Schools of Light aims to build and empower school communities in developing countries in order to reduce the poverty and distress suffered by children of all ages. So Dan has come back, he's a school teacher, and he wants to combine education and ministry, bivocational. Um, So we will be helping them with a couple of their projects. In all of our areas that we partner with that you're going to hear today, we partner with like-minded people who we are in relationship with and who we have a good return, who they have a good return for their money. They've got a multiplication, um, multiplication is attached to it. All right, in our kingdom component, we support Steve Blake with missionary work. I'm not going to give you detail on each of these because we'll be here till about 12 o'clock. Stephen Joseph, who works in Sri Lanka, Nigeria, Kent Hodge, 
Willie Dumas, training Indigenous pastors. This is in Sri Lanka. Two churches in Israel, Penny Nakanishi and Scripture Prime in high school. So they're all the things that we do under kingdom. Last year, we gave some funds to Penny. Penny was in our church years ago. I don't know how many years. 15 years ago. Her mum, Chris Carr, is still in our church. And she lost her husband... Um, who was Japanese, and then she decided she felt called to go back to Japan and plant a church. And last year, because you gave so generously, we were able to give her some money towards a building. You can see the picture up there. But she sent a little clip to thank us all. Hello, Macquarie Life Church. Thank you so much for being a part of the miracle of our new church building the very first permanent church building in Hirakawa City, Northern Japan. Thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you so much for your generosity. God bless you. Firstly, Macquarie, well done. Thank you. How good is it being in a church where it's outward focus? not inward focus, just on us. We would become very selfish. <laughs> and um, I love that the reach out component really does sum up the purpose of our mission so well. Reach out. You know, I love the speed skating at the Winter Olympics. I don't know whether you have seen it this past week, uh, but I love it, mainly because they wear those nice tight uniforms. Oh. No, nah, I'm <laughs> only joking. <laughs> Anything but that, actually. But they have to fight so hard. They have to jostle. They have to get into position. They have to overtake. They have to push just to move into the desired position to set them up for the finish. And then to maintain that position requires a lot of strategy and requires a lot of effort. Just hold on to their lead. And then when they cross that finish line, as you can see in this picture, they reach at their foot across the line. The position creates the reach out for them. Let me say it again. The position creates the reach out. The position creates the reach out. And so just like this, we see this in Scripture. Very often, with the, even with the Samaritan woman, Jesus positioned himself right near the well. So when she arrived, he could speak with her. He could reach out to her. And it all happened through the position that Jesus had right near that well. And so can I encourage you with our missions to be mindful that position provides the mission opportunity. I've had the privilege the last couple of months of looking at our missions work as a church. And we cover a lot of ground. Like Rose said before, we would be here all day, hour after hour, if we told you every single story, every single program and project and partnership that we're involved in. Um, but it's absolutely fantastic to see the outworking of this taking place. So I'm going to touch on a couple of our overseas mission partnerships that we support. First one is our Haynes Home. As a church, we're the sole supporters of the Haynes Children's Home located in Tirupattur in India. And we've been supporting them for 10 years now. 10 years. How amazing is that? And this is the children in their Christmas outfits that you generously gave to them last year. And I've been there and getting to hold the hands of some of these children, not knowing their story, barely being able to communicate with them, with their <laughs> tiny broken bits of English here and there. Um, it's a beautiful thing to see and witness the tr true transformation that is taking place through our church and the partnership that we have with them. All of the children come from families living in poverty. Many parents are disabled or widowed, and some kids have no living parents and extended family that are able to support them. Unfortunately, due to COVID, all of the children had to return to the care of a relative and schools were closed down. The license the Haynes Home holds prevents any children from leaving at the home when there is no school being held. However, 
Over this period, with our donations, Macquarie, staff at the children's home have done the most incredible job of putting together and delivering care packs and study materials to all of the children. These care packs have provided essential food items and hygiene products to the families of these children, and they have been an absolute godsend. The staff have also continued to give care packs and support to around 100 widows in the local district and members of the local community who have been struggling to feed themselves during the lockdowns. And there you can see some of the resource that our church has provided to these widows. Radio, some larger needs moving forward for the Haynes home. Um, actually, we might have one or two quick thank you videos from the kids we might show first. Christmas and New Year. We are praying for you. How amazing is that? (laughs) Can't help but put a smile on your face. That one boy was determined to get life in there at the end of Macquarie. Macquarie, life! (laughs) Some larger needs, though, for our um, Haynes home. New mattresses and bedding for all of the children. A new bus is needed. The bus that Macquarie, our church, generously donated 10 years ago has been very well and loved and used, and it's time for an upgrade. An admin office to be built and fitted out at the girls' home, a computer room for the kids to learn basic computer skills, and if permission can be granted from the local authorities, a medical camp for all the children and people in need in the local community. So moving forward, those are the needs, and that's what we would love to be helping um, bring and support to the Haynes home. Okay. Another partnership we have is with Christian Faith Ministries. This is with Kent and Ruth Hodge, um, and they founded Christian Faith Ministries in northern Nigeria in 2007. It started with a Bible college. However, Boko Haram, a terrorist organization, targeted this area in northern Nigeria and because it was a very highly strategic fighting ground. So they resolved Kent and Ruth with a lot of courage to stay and respond to this crisis. And from there, CFM has established all of the following. A crisis home for the people who have suffered from terrorism and tribal conflict, a health clinic, a Bible college, a missions conference, schools, church planning, water projects, vocational training centre, and I love this one, tractor rental. So if you're in northern Nigeria and you need a tractor, you know where to go. (laughs) Hopefully they're supercharged tractors, turbo diesel, you know. Anyway, in December last year, they held a missionary conference with an expected 4,000, but guess how many they had? 8,000 attendees. The photo you can see is of their 2022 Bible College students, 800 in total. They say that they're getting actually close to the 1,000 mark as people just keep coming into their college. A gathering of this size... Okay, would have been seen as threatening years ago. But because of the groundwork they've been doing year after year and establishing themselves, having a a reputation of loving their neighbour, loving their community, loving their Muslim brothers and sisters that they're surrounded by, they have become a trusted, a trusted organisation in that area. They're currently cooking 26,000 meals per week. And these meals are for their college students, children in their crisis home, and their medical centre. You are now going to see a video of Richard, who is the head boy of his secondary school. So this is Richard. And Richard has been the head boy of uh, his secondary school, the, like the school prefect. And uh, I know he's done very well, and we're all very proud of him. Richard is also from Borno State. So can you tell us what happened that brought you to CFM some years ago? Okay. 2014. 24th August 2014. I lost my dad in the Boko Haram fight in Shafa. So Boko Haram killed your father? Yes, ma'am. What about your mother? My mom, she's teaching there. She's a school teacher? She's a school teacher. Okay. She teaches Hausa language. Okay. So before the event, we packed and go to my mother's village because we are hearing like they be fights here. So my dad is there. That's when they attack and kill him. So since from then, I did not enter school. For so, which year was that? Twenty fourteen. Yes, till 
2015, after I come to Plateau State, there is one lecture I use in TCNN, mm -hmm. and you are wrong. So he used to pay school fees for me. That's when I started paying school fees for me. Okay. Then enter school. Then from then they resume work in my uh, in my mother's in the Shafa okay. where we stayed. So, so you went back to Shafa. So, we went so back. your mom could work again. Yes. yes. So we told him. So he just gave us a farewell and we went back there so that my mom could work there again. Yeah? Yes. That's when we heard about the event of anybody that is affected and struggling. Yes. But in school fees and the rest. So I should bring us to Christian Faith Ministries. Mm -hmm. That's when my mother registered for me and my sister. That's just one story of hundreds and thousands of lives that have been transformed through CFM. Okay, another um, partnership with Macquarie Life that we support is Liberty People. We have supported the work of Steve and Helen Blake now for many years, and I've witnessed Steve Blake on the mission field in action. And I don't think I've ever seen a better missionary. He's got a, such a soft heart and he hears people. He listens, but he's good at problem solving and showing compassion. Here is a thank you video from Matt, their son. G'day Macquarie, God bless you. I hope you're having a great weekend and I wish we could be there with you, but I just wanted to say thank you from Liberty People for a few of the things that you've been holding together and funding for the last uh, 12 months, but also ongoing. You've been an incredible support to Liberty People through the years. But just to highlight three things especially, um, in the last 12 months, you have helped us to fund the woodworking and building construction certificate at our school in Port Vila in Vanuatu. That sounds extremely specific and maybe not super exciting on the surface of it, but it is super exciting because Work opportunities for people in Vanuatu are few and far between and only actually getting fewer and farther between. And this is an incredible thing to be equipping young people with when they get to the end of their normal schooling years. So thank you for that. Um, you've also put towards our new building for our main church in Mindoro in the Philippines, which is still absolutely booming. And our big struggle is actually just keeping up with the growth and all the things that God's doing in that incredible church and all of the little church plants that keep on springing up out of it. So we thank you for that. That's a big focus for us at the moment. It's a huge project raising funds for something like that. We thank you for your giving towards that. The third thing is you're planting into a, a new piece of ground, if you like, in Kiribati, uh, which has all been a little bit interrupted by COVID, but that's okay. We're doing leadership training, gospel outreach through Kiribati, and hopefully we'll be on the ground at some point. Um, and, and doing some beautiful gospel work there. So we thank you for your investment into that. And last thing, just to quickly mention as well, we're giving our kids department, youth department and our young adults uh, some funds this year. And we are going to be encouraging them to do something in our community, to actually do a reach out to our community here. So that's really exciting. And I, as a church, we want to support that and pray into that that there can be some wonderful fruitfulness to come out of that reach out. Thank you, everyone. I'll hand over to Mindy. All righty. Um, it's beautiful, the missions projects that we do. We are the body of Christ on the earth. And we're not just his head and his torso together on a Sunday in worship, but we're his hands and we're his feet, and we're his heart, and the world needs a new definition of who God is, and God is good. These projects that we are doing, the things we support, what we do in our community is the goodness of God on the earth. So thank you, church. Don't get weary in doing good. Let's keep it up. All right, I'm going to start with practical. You'll find this little form on your seat. This is a missions uh, information and giving form. I just want to explain to you if you would like to be part of our giving, to fill out this form, bring it back next week. Now, if you are online, you can find it on our website and you can submit the form online anytime. So you can give on the day, you can give regularly, you can pledge to give at a time in the future. Our giving has tax deductibility available, so check the details on the back of the form. And you're right to go. Now, back to the good stuff. I'm here for Macquarie Care, the hands and feet of Christ in our very own community. 
Through Macquarie Care, we feed the hungry, we take in the homeless, we look after the aged, we look after young mums through our playgroup, we build programs for mental health and so much more. So this is our strategy. We start with kindness projects and kindness projects are just simple projects that show the kindness of Christ because we believe that kindness leads people towards repentance, don't we? Which means kindness leads people towards Christ. So we just have our Christmas hampers and toys that we give out at Christmas time to families in need, bags of dignity, which is new clothes and personal items for people when they leave prison with just the clothes on their back hopping on a bus. We give them these bags and fresh set of clothes, a maintenance team, a benevolent relief fund, and we also just respond to projects as they come up in the community. So last year, one of our school chaplains said, my school has asked if the church can help. I love that question. Yes, the church can help you. The kids were going to their Canberra excursion. It was a low socioeconomic school and they needed warm clothes. So our young families gathered around and got some warm clothes together. So whatever the community needs, we just want to be ready to respond. Now I'm going to just show you a quick video which is a thank you for your Christmas hampers and also a sneak peek for Manor House because you're probably all wondering what happens up there in Manor House when we give out the food. So here is that video. Hi, it's Michelle and Julie from East Lakes Family Support Service and we'd love to thank Macquarie Life Church for the wonderful donations of toys and hampers that will really go a long way to help our families this year. We've had a really tough year so... Again, we'd love to say thank you so much. It's going to make a big difference. Uh, this is Gloria here again. Uh, please come to see us at Manor House. Uh, as you can see, we've got heaps of um, uh, things here for you. Making 100 hampers is never easy and requires a lot of work. And we have this team that come and faithfully serve every week. Hi, I come to the food pickup on a Thursday and it's the thing that's helped me keep my house and my sanity during these tough times um, when I'm unable to get a job. I just appreciate everything that's done and the wonderful human contact from everyone who volunteers is amazing. And I just want to say thank you. So good. Manor House gave out 3,000 hampers over last year. They doubled what they had been giving out the year before. And as you can see, for some people, it's actually the thing that's keeping them going. That lady's name was Kieran, and she said, you heard her say that we not only met her need to actually feed her family and keep her home, but the human connection was so important to her. So COVID willing, we were a bit halted last year. We're expanding the programs that Manor House offers to build more of that connection. We're going to do some equipping programs. Um, we're going to do shine with the young women and some coffee afternoons to connect them socially. So that's going to be beautiful. Also in our community hub, so Manor House is one of our community hub projects where people come to our site. We turn our church into a community centre. We also have the Seniors Cafe where we take in aged care residents and give them a beautiful morning. Playgroup for our mum. We're running courses and last week we launched our wellbeing course, which was a brilliant opportunity for me personally to bring a friend. And I know that that course is not going to just feed her mental wellbeing, but sneaking in there is some spiritual support to start to grow her in Christ. Um, Matt Crew are art afternoons for our kids and also we have a caseworker who works across our projects that we employed last year so they're available to help anyone uh, and once the multi-purpose centre is built look out Macquarie Care is coming for you community so as well as the programs on site we do a lot of things off site we've got community chaplains and uh, these are our community action things uh, we've got chaplains in schools we support Hello Hunter which is like a lifeline but you're actually able to pray and spiritually support the people who call for help and we have a new coffee cart and we're hoping to take that to the streets in 2022. We have community engagement days where, we, um, we, where you can come and get involved. So there'll be the Seniors Christmas concert towards the end of the year. We're going to support the Lake Macquarie Fun Run as well this year. So uh, actually, if you want to get involved too, Night Under the Stars is another great night to come. If you're brave enough to sleep in your car, we, we do advocacy and we raise awareness for homelessness in that space. Now, speaking of homelessness, God has graced our church with this unique gifting to be able to minister to the homeless. It's a beautiful space. It's a very unique one. And we have an amazing team with a huge vision beyond what I can tell you today. 
um, but we've been running our backyard now for a little while. There's a 10-year waiting list for social housing, and that's just a shocking, hopeless statistic for people who find themselves out of a home. The, the government support is not there for them. And the three main causes of homelessness that we've found with the people we've helped in the last year are mental health, domestic violence, and affordable housing. And affordable housing is one of the growing crises of our current decade. We have a lot of community respect. That our community respect the church for the work that we do with the homeless. So our backyard gives a safe place for people to sleep in our car park. And we also offer them beautiful shower, kitchen, toilet and laundry facilities and try and help them get back on their feet. Now, in this program, we also in that time identify people where we can really help them transform their life. And so we move them into a, a home. So Macquarie, you actually put them in a home. We partner with in large living and property investors to give them lovely, affordable homes that they can live in. And in that 12 month period, we give them casework, we give them milestones that they have to achieve. And that process will transform their lives. That's pretty exciting, isn't it, church? A transformational project. Um, last week we were able to put a couple in their home that had been sleeping in their car for a year and it was, just a work, it was just an accident that led to an injury that led to loss of work which led to loss of home which led to this cycle of homelessness for them and now they're in a beautiful home and we're supporting them and earlier in the year we were able to support a couple who were sleeping in their car before imagine that, first 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 sleeping in your car. So you, Macquarie, put them in a home and we're going to work with that family over the next 12 months. And I'm just going to finish with Jenny's story. Jenny is like your mum, like your sister, like your auntie. We have so many women over the age of 50 that find themselves homeless. So she's someone that we were able to help last year. So this video will tell you her story. The reason that I became homeless was because of domestic violence. He started to use marijuana and alcohol at 8 o'clock in the morning and he became very violent. And without a lot of thought, I took what I could in my car and my two little dogs and I just left. I parked in the street. I thought I was going to be safe. Three men, they came over and started yelling, just knocking on the window initially and saying, what are you doing here? Um, it ended up they were just rocking my car backwards and forwards, rocking it and rocking it. They picked up rocks and said, not going to break the windows. I was terrified. And I was in terrible pain with my back because I was sitting up in my car and putting my legs over the, with the gear thing and everything else. And in that time, I ended up in a, a mental hospital in that six months. I thought the only way to get where I needed to go was to take my life. To leave without a fight. Weeks turned into months, and then I heard about our backyard, and I said, "Is there any possibility that I could come there and stay?" And she said, "Yes, of course." And I said, "I've got two little dogs," and she said, "They're welcome too." And I just burst out crying. I couldn't believe it. And they had a beautiful kitchen there, and. It, really clean shower and toilet. That was just a blessing from God. It really was. I never stopped praying. I prayed day and night that something would happen. Our backyard contacted me and she said, Jenny, I think we've got a house for you. And I believe just beautiful, this, this little house that I, I'm living in now. <laughs> and my two little dogs, I would just open the door and they would just run down the back to two of them together and then run up the front of the house. And the joy that they had and to the Macquarie Fields Church because without them I wouldn't be here.
I never ever saw it happening. And I am so grateful. <laughs> so grateful. Well, thank you so much, Mindy, Dan and Roz, for sharing our mission's vision. I'm always blown away by how much we're able to achieve together. And I'm excited by what God has for us this year as a church. And also for all of us individually as we do our own reach out. You know, Paul said to the Corinthian church, you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. I want to remind you <laughs> that you are an important part of our reach out. Whether you think your part is small or big, I want you to know it counts. I encourage you, as I encourage myself, to pray and ask God how you can be a part of reaching out in your world this year. I want to pray for you, if that's okay. Let's pray. Now, Father, I pray for each one who has heard the message today, that they will see that they are needed and have a part to play. I think of Jesus' words, go into all the world, and I release each one listening that they would go and reach out with your love into whatever sphere you place them in this year. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, I have four important announcements for you, so don't tune out. <laughs> Number one, men's camp is coming up on the 25th to the 26th of Feb. This is a great time of connection where the men have such a good time together doing all things that men love to do. I'm sure it includes food and fun and mateship. So it's $40 with discounts for under 12, so you can register online now for that. Number two, Macquarie women are having their first event for the year on Monday the 21st of Feb, 7 to 9 p.m. here at the church and they would love to see you there girls. Number three, Divorce Recovery is a Careforce Life Key course that runs for eight weeks and it's starting on the 21st of February. Now this course offers a safe place to process and to find skills and courage to rebuild and move forward in a friendly and supportive environment. It's only $30, $5, and so I encourage you to register online for that. Number four, our Thrive course will start on the 7th of March. It runs for three weeks, 7 to 9 p.m. in the Church Cafe. This is for those who are new to Macquarie, but also for those who've been maybe coming for a while and really want to connect into our church body. You will hear from our pastors and leaders about the heartbeat of our church, and you'll also discover a little bit about your own unique giftings. So I encourage you, register online today. Well, hasn't it been a great service? I hope that you've enjoyed it. Why don't you join us next week when we have Pastor Mark sharing with us. So thank you again for joining us and have a great week.